Is your next song ready to send to a mix engineer? Should you be sending stems or tracks? What should you name your files and how do you best edit them? What levels should you be going for? Well, I'm gonna address all these questions and more. Stick around. Welcome everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. If I don't get to your specific question on this topic, uh, just go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. I try to get back to as many comments as I can. Uh, as a mix engineer, I receive tracks from all kinds of different musicians and producers of varying skills and experience. So I may receive tracks that are in pristine condition and I may receive them in uh, not so great condition and they need a lot of help. So I thought this would be a, a great topic to discuss how to properly prepare your song to send off to a mix engineer or to a producer. All right, so first thing, the really easy thing, let's just get it out of the way real quick, make sure you're using the right bit rate and resolution. So if you're a contributing musician and you're sending your tracks off to a producer or an engineer, just make sure that you're using the same bit rate and resolution as the rest of the project. Now to be safe, I would recommend just recording in 24 bit 48 kilohertz, because chances are they're not recording above 48 kilohertz and if they are recording in 44.1 then they can easily sample down into from 48 to 44.1. The next big thing I wanted to discuss is stems versus tracks. What should you be sending off? And now I've, I've noticed a lot of people using the two interchangeably but they are not the same thing. All right stems are going to be stereo bounces typically of groups of instruments like you would get a drum stem that would be a drum mix um, bounced into a single stereo file. Uh, a vocal stem would be all your vocals bounced into a single stereo vocal stem. Uh, a mixing engineer can't really do a whole lot with stems. They can do some, but it's, there's not going to be a ton of mixing going on. And typically where stems come from is if an engineer is using a lot of outboard equipment and they're getting ready to print the final mix, they will then print instead each group in stems. Um, that way when they send the mix off to the mastering engineer or to the label and they hear back that there needs to be a revision, you know, the label says, oh, give me a little bit more vocals or something like that. They don't have to now recall all of their settings on all their outboard gear because they have it all printed on stems. So then they just bring up the vocal stem by 1 dB, it's already got all their compression and their effects built into it, and then they just ship it off. Way easier than having to recall everything on outboard gear and having to do a brand new mix with just one more decibel of vocals. Whereas tracks, it's a file for every single instrument. So you got a track for your kick in, your kick out, your snare bottom, your snare top, on and on and on for every source that you recorded. Now with that, your mix engineer can actually do a full mix and get really creative. So make sure you're sending tracks off to your mix engineer and not stems and make sure you're, you're using the names right. And that moves into our, our next topic, which is stereo versus mono. A lot of times I receive <clears throat> stereo bounces of each instrument. Um, Instead of bouncing your files, guys, make sure you're exporting your files, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But I don't need a stereo bounce of your kick drum. I mean, I'm assuming you probably mono mic'd your kick drum and not stereo mic'd it, and same thing with your snare and your toms. If there are, we'll just say, 12 instruments in your drum kit, and then I get stereo versions of every instrument, now I have 24 uh, audio channels instead of 12 audio channels. So then I can leave them in stereo within Pro Tools, but then if I put any kind of effects processing onto that channel, it's doing double the work, right? Because instead of just doing one audio file, it's doing a left and right audio file. So it doubles the work on my machine, my processor, as I'm adding plugins. So I can either do that and deal with the extra processing load, or I can go through one instrument at a time and separate it into mono and then delete the right channel and just keep the left. And that's a pain in the butt. If you record it in mono, 
just send it in mono. All right, and the way to do that, again, is to export your tracks, export your files from your DAW, do not bounce them. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that here in just a second, so let's go ahead and move to Pro Tools. I just pulled up this session. It's a song I'm working on right now, doing some tracking. I haven't even really started mixing it yet, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to prepare and edit your tracks. Now, like I was just saying, you wanna make sure and export your tracks and not bounce them, because um, if you bounce, anything you have over here, right, on your inserts, that's gonna be baked into your bounce. Now you might be saying, Matt, I'm not a complete noob. I know to bypass my effects before I bounce. Okay, that, that's probably true. But what a lot of people don't think about is the volume changes. So let's say you're a drummer, right, and you're doing, you've done multiple takes, and now you're doing a quick comp to get your final take to send off you've probably done a little mix of your drums just while you're listening to it uh, so that it, it sounds a little bit better. So now, you know, these negative tens and, and any kind of plus or just whatever volume you've put into your mix, when you bounce those individual files, that volume change is going to also be baked into that file that you sent to me. And I don't want that. I don't want the file, you know, 10 decibels quieter or louder than it was originally recorded. So it's another reason that you don't want to actually bounce these audio files, you want to export them. So first thing I'm going to do to get them ready for export, uh, let's take a look at this bass track. Uh, done a lot of edits on it, basically did a, a manual gate on it. Um, and you just need to go through each edit and make sure that every edit has a fade or a crossfade on it. Now I've already done that while I was working on it. You can see if I zoom in real close here, there's this tiny fade. And that's because if you don't have a fade at the beginning of an edit, there's a good chance that you're gonna have a pop, especially if there's audio during that time. So let's just listen to this real quick. Right, so I have fades on all those. If I go over here between these two edits, you can see I have a crossfade built in. Um, but let's just say someone was editing and they said, oh, I want the file to start right here, right? And they didn't put, they didn't put in a, a fade there at the beginning. I can almost guarantee you that that is going to pop when we listen to it. Okay, so let's listen. Yep, as soon as it comes in, it pops. And the difficult thing becomes after it's consolidated, which I'm gonna show you how to do here in a second. So we're gonna select all. Consolidate it. Just by looking at that, I can't tell that there is a bad edit there. So it's not until I listen to it and I hear the pop that I, I zoom in here and you're gonna see this bad edit. So if you zoom in super close, you can see it's a, a flat line there, which it should not be. So as I listen to it, I hear that pop, and then I have to go back and manually insert a fade, which takes me a lot of time. So you can go in manually and add a fade to each one of your edits, but that also takes a long time. So the easiest way to do it, just after you do all your edits, you can batch fade. So on a PC, that's Control F, make sure you select everything first. Uh, Control F, Command F on a Mac, brings up this batch edit, or batch fade. And then on every edit, it's going to add either a fade or if there's two uh, clips right next to each other, it will do a cross fade. And so I just have mine set to three milliseconds. It just keeps it nice and short, just in case there's a transient there, it doesn't cut off that transient. So that's the fastest way to do that. Okay, now that all your edits have fades on them, you wanna turn all these different clips into a single audio file so you can export it. In Pro Tools, that's called Consolidate. If you're using a different DAW, it might be called something different. But the, there's a couple things you wanna keep in mind when doing this. 
Number one, you wanna make sure that all of your audio clips start from the same place, right? You don't want one audio clip to start from halfway in the song and the other one to start from the beginning of the song because when I import those into my session, uh, Pro Tools is just gonna put everything at the beginning of the session and I'm not gonna know where that file is supposed to be. So make sure that all of your files start from the same place, even if it's a noise that only happens once at the very end of the song, still start that file from the very beginning of the song, right? And then if there's just silence behind it, you don't have to include that, right? Every file doesn't have to end at the same point because I may end up going through and, and cutting that off anyways, just to make sure it's silent but make sure everything starts at the same point. And you need to make sure everything starts on a grid, right? So make sure you have your BPM plugged in up here at the top and that you have grid mode on. So that's F4 in Pro Tools. And then I just created a marker here where uh, the song starts. So I can just easily go to my marker by hitting period one period uh, in Pro Tools, or you could just go and select that grid point as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the end of the song, and I'm gonna shift select all of it. Now I have this entire bass track selected from my intro point all the way to the end. Now I'm gonna hit Alt Shift 3 on PC, or Option Shift 3, I believe, on, uh, on Mac, and now I have this beautiful single file here with all of my nice edits in there. And of course, you don't have to consolidate each track one at a time. You can do them all at the same time if you want, or just a group of instruments. So I have my drums grouped right now. So I'm just gonna grab the end of it and hit shift, and then my first marker, period one period. And then that will select everything from the end to the beginning, and then all I have to do is hit consolidate. and now they're all consolidated that quickly. You don't have to go one at a time. Okay, so now that everything is properly edited and consolidated, uh, we don't even have to go and click export. All we have to do, properly name everything, and the file is already on our computer, right? Because it's in our session. So then we just have to go to our audio files folder and grab them. So the best way to do this is to title your files something unique and something the mix engineer can easily see. So I think the working name on this song right now is Inferno. So we're just going to go through these tracks and title them uh, Inferno dash whatever. Okay, so this is kick in. So let's go Inferno space dash kick in. All right, now on to the second one. Inferno dash kick out. And you can also copy and paste the Inferno dash thing so you don't have to type it out each time. It makes it a little bit faster. But go through all your files, do that. And like I said, these audio files are obviously already on your computer. So just navigate to your audio files folder, which I've done right here. And then I have a ton of audio files in here, obviously. But all I have to do is type in the unique name that I gave it under the uh, the search, and here you go. There's my kick out, there's my kick in. If I had done this with all my files, they'd be right there. Then all I have to do is grab them, drag them into your Dropbox or your Google Drive. You can zip them first before you do that to make it a little bit easier, and then send it off to your mix engineer. So again, if you have a question that I didn't get to, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching this long. If you're looking for a mix engineer and you wanna work with me, you can always contact me here on Instagram at Matt Ingram Sound or go to my website, mattingramsound.com and contact me through the contact form there. So thanks again, see you next time.